I want to see how fast this thing goes. <laughs> Whoa, it's actually pretty... Okay, kind of lost me there. Whoop! Whoop! <laughs> Let's go. Uh. Today I'm going to be reviewing the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and center stage, you can see it right now, it's following me everywhere I go. Even if I go down like this. <laughs> oh man, this is awesome. So center stage is one of the features for the new iPad Pro 12.9 inch 2021 model, fifth generation with the M1 chip. What makes the new iPad Pro extremely powerful and why it's a game changer and why this center stage is also a game changer in the video conferencing industry. And I want to talk about the limitations for the new iPad as well. So let's get to it. So guys, let's find out more about the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And is this thing gonna replace your MacBook Pro? Can the iPad Pro replace your MacBook Pro? We're gonna find out in this video. So stay tuned. There are three things that makes the 2021 iPad Pro 12.9 inch special. Number one is the M1 chip. Number two is the XDR display with the mini LEDs. We're gonna talk about that. And number three is the 5G connectivity. This year's model is a tad thicker by 0.5 millimeters, and the speakers are situated differently than last year's model. Be careful if you order a case for this. Do not use a 2020 case. This is an example of a perfect case that will fit this perfectly, and we're gonna put this on. This is by Spigen, my favorite brand, Tough Armor. And I also found another case by a brand called ESR, which is a new brand. And it looks good. So the first thing is, we have got to talk about this powerful M1 chip. And when I say powerful, as in really, really powerful, it is more powerful than my 16-inch MacBook Pro as well. The average Geekbench 5 results, by the way, for this, for a single score is 1,718. And for multi-score, it's an average of 7,284. Now, in comparison to the 2020 iPad Pro, which uses the A12Z Bionic chip, it scored an average of 1,126 and 4,720 on the same tests. And that is a huge leap in terms of performance. So the M1 chip is actually more powerful than your computer. But where does all that power go? And is it worth it? Keep watching to find out. Now this M1 has an eight core CPU. And according to Apple, it's 50% faster. And it also has an eight core GPU, eight core. That's more than my four core Radeon 5500 on my MacBook Pro 16 inch. So this thing is a beast. It can handle lots of graphics applications and AR. And when Apple says console level graphics, they were not lying. Let me show you why. Let's go ahead and fire up 3D Mark to find that why. Now 3D Mark is a graphics intensive application and it tests the graphic performance, the graphics performance of your mobile devices. So let's go ahead and test it. Check this out, man. <laughs> wow. Look at the frames here. You've got, you see here, you've got 290, oh wow. Okay, and the FPS is 80, almost 80. I ran the same test on my Galaxy S21 Ultra. It was nothing like this. It was not even 60 FPS. It was way less. So this is the kind of power that you get with the M1 chip. You've got an eight core graphics GPU. You've got a powerful CPU, multi-core, single core, even more powerful than Intel 10th gen chips as well. This kind of power, hopefully, can be utilized for the new iPad Pro. All right guys, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the Liquid Retina XDR display. And this is the same kind of display that Apple used for their XDR displays. You remember that expensive, super expensive display that you can buy for $5,000 with a $1,000 stand? It's the same kind of display and it's one of the most beautiful displays I've ever seen in a tablet. Now this has extreme dynamic range, one million to one contrast ratio according to Apple. It's perfect for viewing images, for editing HDR. So let's go ahead and fire up Netflix for example. Okay guys, so I've just turned off the lights, increased the brightness. I want you to see how this thing looks like on Netflix and let's go ahead and let's say play something. So check that out. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the speakers as well. Um, 
But the first thing is, guys, check out the contrast, the incredible contrast. This thing has a breathtaking 1,000 nits of full screen brightness and 1,600 nits of peak brightness. And it also has P3 white color gamut, true tone and pro motion. Of course, it's 120 hertz. It's amazing. Just look at these colors, you guys. I mean, this is incredible. And I think it's better to get the 12.9 inch mini LED version because this thing has over 10,000 mini LEDs. They're grouped into more than 2,500 local dimming zones. That's what Apple calls them. And depending on the content, the brightness in each zone can be precisely adjusted to achieve this astonishing 1 million to 1 contrast ratio. And by the way, there's something that I truly love about Apple devices in general. I have no idea how Apple is able to do this, but one of the best things about Apple devices is their incredible speaker quality. Whether it's a MacBook Pro, an iPhone, or even an iPad Pro, this year's iPad Pro is even more powerful. Nobody's mentioning this, by the way, and I don't know why Apple is not talking about it or advertising it, but it's a strong selling point. The speakers on this thing are extremely powerful. For example, let me turn this up. You can see how this thing is. Let's hear that. Knuckles, your hat is on backwards. Oh my God. You see, this is my, this is my voice right now, and it's very, very loud. You see that? I'm about to teach Dave the intern. Oh my God, so that's extremely loud. Wow. I mean, the bass is incredible. It's almost exactly like my MacBook Pro, which has, I think, very, very similar, a very similar audio profile. So the sound on this thing is just incredible, apart from the screen. So the new iPad Pro also supports the Apple Pencil 2, which is one of the best drawing experiences you can have, almost completely lag-free. The latency is, is at an incredible two. That's just an incredible latency. I mean, check this out. When you want to draw something, okay, let's go ahead and draw something. Check out how accurate and lag-free this drawing experience is. completely responsive and it's very convenient if you want to um, erase something you just double tap on this double tap it again to draw and it's perfect for drawing for writing and with iPad OS 14 you've got some new improvements as well one of the best things I like about iPad OS 14 is object recognition so if I do this it would recognize a triangle it would recognize a circle it would recognize a rectangle, for example. So all these things are really good if you want to, for example, write down notes. It's got handwrite, handwriting recognition. All these things would be amazing if you use, for example, programs like Photoshop. I've got Photoshop right here. So if you use Photoshop or if you use a program like Procreate, also one of my favorite programs, these are incredible. These are incredible for drawing, for for editing. So if you are an artist or a content creator or a creative person, this would be very useful for you. The next point that I want to talk about, so we've talked about the M1 chip, how powerful it is. That's the most important selling point. Number two is this beautiful 12.9 mini LED display with 10,000 LEDs and an incredible contrast ratio. And the third thing, the third selling point for this, these are the three most important ones is 5G. Now this particular model is the Wi-Fi version 512. I don't have the 5G model to test how fast it is, but I assume it's going to be super fast. Your speeds are definitely going to be above 500 Mbps. So if you are a person that wants mobility, who wants an iPad model that that is 5G capable, you don't want the, the Wi-Fi version, you want the LTE version, this would be an excellent upgrade for you. But for me, honestly, from my personal experience, I don't like to buy tablets that are LTE ready because I feel like it's kind of a waste of your money because you can simply connect this to your phone, which is already 5G capable by creating a 5G hotspot. And I never use this on its own without my phone. My phone's with me everywhere I go. So if you want to use this, as a standalone LTE ready device, that would be great for you. But for me, for my personal experience, I think that getting a 5G LTE version for an iPad may not be worth the money if you have your phone with you all the time.
The next amazing feature that I want to talk about that I've already shown you at the beginning of this video is called Center Stage. Let's go ahead and turn on Center Stage. So you can see this again. By the way, this was at the Apple Store. I was trying to test it in a better, well-lit environment. And that's me I'm walking around trying to test Center Stage. Now, Center Stage works primarily with video conferencing apps such as FaceTime and fortunately it also works with third-party apps like Zoom because FaceTime does not work for us here in the UAE and Dubai it doesn't work but it works with third-party applications like Zoom. The problem with Center Stage is that it doesn't work with a main camera. Unfortunately that's not available yet but who knows maybe Apple is going to introduce this as an update in the future and you can enable this feature by going to settings and turning it on for FaceTime but I don't have FaceTime here so I'm not going to be able to find it. However you will be able to find this in Zoom, for example. As for the cameras, you've got a new ultra-wide camera with a 12 megapixel sensor and 122 degree field of view. Now that is the same camera that you use for center stage. Center stage works because this thing has a wide angle lens and it follows you around because of that. Now the 12 megapixel camera is nothing special. I mean, check out some of these pictures I've taken here. And the video recording is also not that special but you got 4k recording for the main cameras so for the main cameras here you've got 4k recording but for the front facing camera i was disappointed about that honestly the front facing camera is at 1080p maximum 60 at 1080p but for the main camera you've got 4k recording at 60 as well so the next thing that we got to talk about is the new thunderbolt port now there's a thunderbolt port and it's powerful it works with an existing USB-C connectors. This is great if you want to transfer huge files. And if you have something like the Pro Display XDR at full 6K resolution, this thing is going to be amazing. The speed is at a staggering 40 gigabits per second. And that's the bandwidth for wired connections. So here it is, the Spigen cover. And that's the first thing I should have done, actually. With, but it wasn't available until now. So you got to put one of these covers on the iPad and... Let's go ahead. The reason I love Spigen is because it's got the patented air cushion technology. You can see that here. And this air cushion technology is pretty good because it protects the iPad from falls and any kind of damage as a result. So, and the thing I love about Spigen, I've returned another cover or a case that was horrible, is the precise cut. That's what I love about Spigen. Check this out, man. This looks beautiful tough you can drop this thing and no problem at all it's very tough and look at that it's got a kickstand how cool <laughs> i like this okay so now let's talk about i guess there's no need for my stand anymore i used to carry one of these things this is from a brand called ugreen and it's one of the best stands i made a review on this check this out if you haven't seen this before now this is what I like to use. I like to use the Magic Keyboard, the standalone keyboard like this. And I like to use the Magic Trackpad too. I don't like to use Apple's Magic Keyboard, the one that goes with the, with the tablet, the one attached to it, or the Folio, because this gives me more freedom to put it wherever I want. And this has a large trackpad. The closest thing to this is the Bridge 12 Plus, but that's not even released yet. So I love this freedom that you can get. now. So the big question is, is the iPad 12.9 going to replace your MacBook Pro or your Windows laptop for that matter? And the answer is, the short answer is no. Unfortunately, still not. Even with the Apple M1 chip, which is super powerful, this thing is still held back by software. Now we've been saying this for years, ever since the iPad 2018 version, when they, when they introduced the new design, but the same story goes, this thing is held back by software. It's like a Lamborghini that is stuck on train tracks with limited speed. You can see here, the mouse, even though you're getting an almost laptop-like experience with this, it is still nothing like a laptop. So even if I do this, for example, I can do, you see that? If I wanna go back here, all right, let's do some multitasking, shall we? For example, let's try to use PowerPoint or Excel. Um, but I actually wanted to do the multitasking thing. 
it's a little bit cumbersome, but you got to get used to the multitasking thing on, on the iPad. It's not exactly the same as the MacBook Pro, even though some of the gestures are the same. You get all the apps. If you, if you swipe with four fingers, you get all the apps. And you can switch from one app to the next, like this. So it's almost like the MacBook Pro in that sense, but it's still missing a lot of features. As of now, nothing changed in my opinion, and even the new iPad Pro with the M1 chip cannot replace your MacBook Pro. Now, of course, this depends on your workflow, what you do, and even for those people that say, oh, you can do almost everything on the iPad, or you can do everything on the iPad just like the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, that is not true. The multitasking features are still lacking. There are so many things that Apple needs to introduce in order for this to truly replace a laptop now, what is exactly this? I mean, Apple says that this is not even a computer, but we don't want to get into that. Is this a tablet? Is it a computer? Is it somewhere in between? I think it's somewhere in between, but it's almost getting there. We're, we're heading there. Now, of course, the ultimate dream is to have a MacBook Pro-like capability on this device with, you see, we're already using the trackpad and the keyboard, but we need more multitasking features. We need more control, a more window-like control of the apps just like on the Mac and not only that the problem is if, for example let's have a look at Excel if you look at Excel here you can immediately notice that a lot of the features are missing or even Word if you look at Word let's look at Word for example now if you look at Word a lot of the features here are missing and, and you can immediately tell that this is not the real thing this is just a diluted version of Word I mean, check this out. <laughs> I try to make it look more like Word by turning on the ruler. So at least this looks more like the real thing. But a lot of the features are missing. And not just that. If you, I noticed that if you type on this thing, okay, now the lag is gone. But sometimes you feel a little bit of lag with a Bluetooth keyboard. Now, even with this, now it kind of feels responsive here. But it still feels a little bit laggy in comparison to the MacBook Pro where it's really smooth and everything works perfect on the MacBook Pro. The point is we are heading there with software improvements. I hope with iPadOS 15 this device may one day actually replace your MacBook Pro but let's just be honest here. There's a reason why Apple may not want this thing to be exactly like the MacBook Pro in terms of experience and that is in my opinion I think because if Apple does that then this thing is going to cannibalize your MacBook Pro sales. Why would you need a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air if this thing has an M1 chip with the same kind of performance I mean the same kind of experience as your MacBook Pro and you can do absolutely everything on this. Same Final Cut, same Office apps, same Adobe apps same, by the way, Adobe apps are missing as well. Some of the apps are missing. For example, I couldn't find Audition on this thing. A lot of the things are missing for the iPad and you need more third-party support. You need more customizations, updates, and control in order for this to truly one day replace your laptop. So there you have it, guys. The new iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch with the M1 chip is a powerful beast. I mean, this thing, is even more powerful than the MacBook Pro right here. This is more powerful than this. You saw that with the Geekbench scores, but can this replace this? For now, no, because the software is still holding this back. This is my opinion. However, this is a beautiful device. Media consumption, light usage, even games. This has console level graphics. We didn't even talk about LiDAR. They added LiDAR to this thing. So for AR applications, this is going to be amazing. The speakers on this thing, wow, I just love the speakers. If you want to watch a movie like Netflix or you want to consume media, this is the device to be. I'm starting to like using this even more than this. <laughs> And if Apple spoils us with more options and updates for iPadOS 15, then I might start using this even more. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you love this video, please give it a like. And if you really like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Take care.